So here's our seven millimeter wide sun. Now keep in mind that in real life, the sun is 800,000 miles or 1,300,000 kilometers wide. So on this scale, the earth would be 2.3 feet or 70 centimeters from the sun. So you might notice that the earth and the moon here are actually too small to be noticeable on this scale. So use a magnifying lens to zoom in and you can see there are indeed dots there. It's the earth and the moon and the distance between them, 240,000 miles, is about one quarter of the diameter of the sun. That distance, which only takes light 1.3 seconds to travel, is the farthest any human has ever been. Now even at this scale, to uh, mark where the nearest star is, we're going to have to leave town. When I say leave town, I meant leave the state. We're here just outside of uh, Downley, Idaho, and across the street from Donata Hot Springs. And here is where Proxima Centauri, or the closest star, would be located on our scale. If the sun was a pea, Proxima would be a radish seed, 202 kilometers, or 125 miles away. I set up an experiment in my living room. This slide here <clears throat> is further away. This slide here is a lot closer. So what I did was is I mimicked a star trail. Thanks to Good Times For All, that was genius showing me how to use the star trail settings on the P900 to come up with this experiment, thought experiment. As you can see, this light that's further away is a much shorter trail than this one that's closer. And I've done this with uh, two or three other experiments doing the same thing. Now here's another experiment that I set up in my living room that's pretty much the same as the first one I showed. This top light is further away. This one's a little closer and this one's the closest. This is just refraction off the lens here. So this is our furthest light away so I drew a line on it now we'll come down and we'll measure this light and as you can see it's a little bit longer than the top one move it down here to this light and as you can see the bottom or the closest light here is a longer trail now this is the star trail that got me to thinking about the lights and the star trails being different lengths at different distances. So I brought in measuring device here and measured the trail of the moon. Now if we look around here, this trail is shorter, which would tell us that it's further away than the moon is. Now if we go up here to this next star trail, this one here, it's longer than our moon trail. Which tells me that it's closer than the moon. This one's a little further away. We go over here to this star trail. It's shorter. Go up to this star trail and it's a little bit longer. Now the 
this star trail, it's a little bit shorter. This one here is slightly shorter. This trail right here. This star trail's a lot longer than our moon trail down here. That one's a lot longer. So, how far are the stars? They tell us they're light years away. And the moon is only supposed to be 250,000 miles away. Or 230,000 miles away. So, the question begs to be asked, if that's true and the moon is much, much closer than these stars that are supposedly light years away, one would have to ask, how come the trails are almost the same length? Some are a little shorter, some are a little longer. But as you can see, the moon follows the exact same path and pattern as the stars. No matter where it's at in the sky, like right here, you got it doing the smiley face with the stars, lockstep with the stars exact same spacing between the moon and the stars. Now they tell us the stars are light years away and the moon is 250,000 miles away. Now it takes two and a half hours to do these star trails. In that time the earth supposedly spins to the east at 26 or 2,600 miles. Now it's also supposed to be orbiting the Sun, so in that two and a half hours I've traveled over 166,000 miles. Now one would have to ask themselves, you would think as we're going, orbiting, and spinning, that the Moon being much closer would not be in lockstep with the stars. Somewhere in its orbit, in our orbit, it would cross these lines. It wouldn't be lockstep in the exact same direction, the exact same length of light as the stars which are light years away. So you need to ask yourself, how far away are the stars? How far away is the moon? From this, it tells me that both the stars and the moon are fairly close to the same distance away. In short, do your research, question everything. The nearest star, if it's as far away as they say it is, we would be able to observe that in one night while looking at star trails. However, that's not what we see. We do not see the types of parallax that we can prove that we would see. And I know people say, well, it's a different type of parallax because you're only seeing the stars from a spinning Earth. Well, there's experiments you can do with a camera that you spin as if it were Earth with lights placed at various distances. And when you use the scale that the heliocentric model gives us, it's really hard to do on Earth because it's so far away. But this man here from Cody's lab, his name's Cody, he hates us. But I'm going to use his work. And he shows you if that's the moon and the Earth right there. They're really close together. They're really tiny dots. Here's the sun. And no, that's not how close we are to the sun. He's just showing you size-wise. They're a couple feet apart. And he spaces them apart. But um, the moon and the Earth and the sun at the end of his measuring tape 
and he lays them out. He's laying out some of the planets, Jupiter and Pluto and all of that. There's Pluto. So he's laying these out on a football field. And then he goes to show us where the nearest star would be. And his journey takes him really far. Not just across town, he actually has to leave the state. He drives over 120 miles away using the scale with those tiny little dots that you saw to show us where the nearest star is. That blew a lot of people's minds and really kind of furthers that fantasy of deep space. However, I saw time lapses of the star trails and I've seen them moving with the moon and as I saw them I noticed they were all moving at the same speed as if they were the same distance away from the earth and thought, hmm, shouldn't be seeing that. Or should I? I don't really know. Let me do some tests to prove all things. And then I saw the sun and the moon moving through the sky in a time lapse. And they were moving at the same speed and making light trails that were the same size. And I thought, well, if I can set up an experiment that will prove to me that a spinning camera would do this with lights at various distances, maybe I will look back into this heliocentric model that was invented by someone who just looked at the stars in the 1500s. So I set up my camera and some distant lights and I got this idea from a genius at another channel. His name was Chris Van Matter. And I would seen an experiment where he had done this on a small scale and produced some shocking results. And so I set up a camera, did my own experiment, and sure enough, the, the light trails that I was seeing looked very similar until I traced one of the lights that, were about, that was about a half a mile away and drug it down to a light that was probably 25 feet away from my camera, not even close to the scale that Cody was using. It would have been much closer if that was the sun. It would have been a couple feet away. But I was trying to be biased to the globe. And the light trail was a completely different size. And you could imagine the difference you would be seeing if that distant light was 120 miles away. If we could cut through that much atmosphere, you would see a dramatic difference. And our stars and what we're seeing up above us would look totally different. This is something you can do yourself. Do not believe me. Do not trust me. I could be lying to you. But I hope you're starting to see that we don't need a whole lot of crazy theories to prove the truth. We don't need an Albert Einstein figure who they have put in place to create such theories. Up is up. Down is down. Straight and level is straight and level. There are many more proofs out there. You just have to look up, see for yourself, look at the stars, look at the sun, make sure you're using eye protection. <laughs> but figure this stuff out. It's really awesome. The truth and the fact that they have been able to pull one over on us for so long is quite impressive. But go ahead, suck it up, admit that you were fooled, no big deal. Swallow your pride and do some investigation. The truth really does sound crazy. But once you find out the truth, the lies that you believe sound a whole lot crazier. I encourage you guys to share this before it's deleted again. Download it, mirror it, upload it, whatever you want to do. It's free for anyone that wants to use it. I love you guys. The Father loves you way more than I do and sacrificed a lot more for you than I ever will. I pray and ask that you get to know him and understand who you really are and that it's okay to lose the things of this world to gain something that you cannot lose that you do not deserve and I ask that it sets you free for the Father's glory Yahuwah Elohim the one true Father who made of this earth, who made the heavens, and He loves you. And I thank Him for sending me here to tell you this 
and so that you understand exactly who you are and who He is. May His love and peace be with you forever.